Welcome to the Accomplish More podcast created specifically for the small business owner who doesn't think small. I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. This show is where you'll learn practical ideas, hints, tips, and tricks to help you grow your small business where you can leverage your time and to accomplish more. Thank you for joining me again today for the Accomplish More podcast. I'm Gayla Scrivener, your host. I had plans to talk about something entirely different than what I'm going to talk to talk about today. And you see, sometimes plans need to be deviated from. But something has been weighing heavy on my mind and my heart, and I just wanted to talk about it. You see, I love what I do. I love building and earning a living, serving people as they grow their businesses. I love helping others by taking the weight off of their shoulders of doing absolutely everything in their business and helping them to find routine and systems for tasks that not only help grow their business, but also give them a sense of normalcy and consistency, which sure does help when overwhelm is a daily occurrence. I love the fact that by alleviating just a piece of that overwhelm helps free up the mind to become more organized in thoughts and is a step closer for our clients in achieving the success that they want. It excites me to know that through getting to know each other more, I can serve as a sounding board to my client and help them talk through what needs to be done to bump up to the next level of their business. Now, most of my clients are solopreneurs, service providers, or coaches, or consultants, or online educators that had started out doing absolutely everything themselves, then ventured out to ask for help. And that's a big deal, asking for help. Running a virtual assistant business, I'm not unlike my clients. I, too, started out doing everything myself. I was a one-woman show. It's kind of the definition of solopreneur, isn't it? You know, you've got to do everything solo. But the realization of developing a good team to stay on top of the mounting tasks is where you separate those who truly want to leverage their time and scale their business versus those who are just dabbling. Now, this is what's been weighing heavily on my mind. It's the fact of how to grow and scale a business versus hustling and feeling like you're pushing people into a corner to buy your services. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I was scared to death in opening Scrivener Solutions. My time in in the corporate life was done, and now I created a situation for me to either sink or swim in creating my own business. I chose to swim, but that doesn't mean I didn't tread some water or choke on some water on my way to learning to swim. I'm not sure if that sounded right or not, but hopefully you'll get the point. I was accustomed to working behind the scenes, helping medical offices function. Why not help small businesses do the same thing? Help them function. Let me stay behind the scenes. All I needed to do was to find that overwhelmed small business owner ready to delegate tasks, right? There are a ton of small business owners out there. There's a ton of overwhelm. The perfect solution is to delegate a tiny piece to a virtual assistant like me, right? Well, you would think so. But not everybody is ready to delegate. At first, I wasn't sure what kind of tasks I'd help my would-be clients with. Over time, as I created my own team to better serve our clients, we began receiving more and more requests to help with marketing tasks. At the same time, I needed to grow my own business and build a good marketing foundation. The more my team and I would work with our clients on creating and publishing content for them, the more I wanted to learn about the whole process. When I decided to not look for another medical job and to start my own business, 
I jumped in with both feet. I was determined to make it work. So I read. I read books after book about marketing and marketing in today's world. And I wanted to learn what was most effective in marketing in a digital world. And everything, everything was pointing me to write. Write? I'm not a writer. I didn't believe what I was reading, so I dismissed it. Writing is hard work, at least it was for me. There's got to be an easier way. Well, there isn't. The more I resisted, the more I realized that what I was reading in those books were indeed right. Only through communication, and I saw it by working with my clients who knew and had those consistent processes in place, Only through that communication, for example, the writing or creating content and expressing myself, can I help people and in turn grow my business. I saw it work for my clients who asked for help in their content marketing efforts, and I saw it work as I implemented a content marketing plan for my business. The marketing foundation was the key. I wholeheartedly believe in building a marketing foundation through creating consistent content. Having a website isn't enough. It's the creation of blog posts, whether they're written or audio in the form of a podcast or video, all consistently posted on your digital home, your website. Your website is your digital home. Then systematically building an email list to stay connected with contents and let them know all about the new info that you have to offer, as well as having a social media plan on sharing your new posts. I'm simplifying this just a bit, but those are the key elements that are essential in building a marketing foundation. They all need to be done on a consistent basis so that people can learn more about you and they can know you, like you, and trust you. Therefore, they wanna do business with you. The beauty of it is that as a small business owner, a solopreneur, if you will, you have the opportunity in making big waves by starting out with a little ripple, with creating your own content, creating your content foundation. When you create your foundation, you're Paid advertising will be much more effective when you're ready for it. Now, let me explain uh, a little something. Owning a virtual assistant company, we have two kinds of clients, typically. Now, the first client is the client who has a plan. They see the value of systemizing and know that the value of consistency and longevity is the key for a long-term business. Now, this client is the do-it-yourselfer and is very ambitious. Her budget may not be high, but she knows and she likes the idea of delegating small at first. Then as she grows, so can the list of her delegated tasks. Her team can grow with her. She knows the value of leveraging her time. She wants to free up minutes that turn into hours so she can invest her time elsewhere. For example, she may write her weekly blog post, but then will leave it up to the Scrivener Solutions team to format and publish onto her website, send out an email announcement to her tribe, publicize it on her favorite social media channel. That's the process. She concentrates on the words, on the content. And then the Scrivener Solutions team connects the dots in publicizing it. She is leveraging her time and systematically growing. She's getting her foundation stronger and stronger so that she gains more influence and a following in her market and positioning herself for jumping to the next level of her business. She knows that that consistency of content is the key to growth for long term. Then I have the client who, like the first, is overwhelmed, is tremendously overwhelmed, but really doesn't have a plan, doesn't know where to start to delegate. And I think that there's an underlying fear of 
It's not a matter of delegating. It's just what to delegate. And when I scratch the surface of that, I find that these individuals are struggling with marketing. They don't have a marketing system. Instead, they are hustling. This client knows that they must market their business, but truly hates to sell. She feels like it's a necessary evil and really wants a better way, then turns to me to give her pointers and direction on what to do and where to start. After all, she's overwhelmed and she doesn't know what direction to go. What can she delegate? And I get it. I hate to sell too. And I'm apprehensive in feeling like I'm some sleazy salesperson who's trying to convince you to buy something you don't want to. But selling isn't like that. Oh, it doesn't have to be like that. Because honest marketing isn't a sleazy salesperson trying to convince you of anything. Through honest communication and becoming better at communicating, do you learn to understand how you may serve your client better? Through becoming a better communicator, do you attract more and more individuals who truly need your service and want help from you? Through becoming a better communicator, do you grow your business? So this second client, who's overwhelmed and doesn't have a plan, who wonders what to delegate and is lost in getting anything consistent, seems like they don't have the underlying marketing plan because they're always diverting from one shiny object to another and are always hustling. So both types of clients have taught me a lot, and I'm grateful for that. But I want to talk further about my second client. Usually this client isn't a long-term client. Well, I take that back. Our relationship may be long-term because we like to keep in touch with each other, but they don't consistently market and delegate those little marketing tasks. Instead, maybe try it for a month or two, then try something else. They want instant satisfaction. They're not looking for long-term growth. They are in perpetual hustle mode. They're worried about the short-term and not seeing the long-term benefits of laying down the right marketing foundation. I get it. Sometimes you do have to hustle for to, so that you can pay the bills, but you also at the same time need to lay down a foundation so it doesn't feel like you're chasing after business all the time, but instead people are coming to you to do business with you. Now what I've observed is I believe that these individuals are uncomfortable about sticking their neck out. Yeah. They're very well educated and not afraid of hard work. I see that. But this individual, she loves what she does, and then she concentrates and puts the blinders on on learning more about her craft and honing her skills on, on what she does. But she's not concentrating on what she needs to do to market her business for long-term benefit. Now, she loves the idea about having a business. Maybe she's been in business for a long time. She longs to, to grow, but it's, it may be steadily growing, but it's just at, at tiny increments. But she hates the idea of selling. She has this preconceived idea that selling is a negative act. She wants to feel good. But she avoids the stuff that makes her feel uncomfortable. And since selling is uncomfortable, she avoids it like the plague. Now, if she's uncomfortable, she may want some hand-holding to guide her. And I'm that person that helps. But even though she has somebody helping her along the way, telling her the exact steps, she becomes uncomfortable to follow through with making the commitment of of creating a marketing foundation of consistent content. And I believe it's because she seems afraid of rejection or criticism. Even though she may outwardly say that this doesn't bother her, she is still her own worst critic. She has to have things perfect or not at all. But it's a scary thing to stick your neck out and create content 
and open yourself up for people to criticize or say something negative. But here's the deal. There are so many more people out there that you can help. And that's why creating this platform, an online platform, consistent content, so that people can learn to get to know you is so important. Now, this person, she makes excuses that she's too busy. She's not tech savvy enough or she doesn't know what to say. Or maybe she doesn't have a website or doesn't know what direction to target, doesn't have a logo or worse, she changes the logo every six months because she's just plain scared. She thinks fixing the logo is going to help bring people in. It's not that. Being scared is okay. Being scared of going big. It's natural. And this person tells herself that she does want to grow. She likes to be a small business, but she tricks herself that she's a big thinker. She may say that she's a big thinker, but really she's not. Deep down, she knows she's not. Instead of taking the risks of moving forward and building her online platform where she could gain an audience where she could learn more about herself and those people that she serves even more fully. She chooses to think small. She may start her website, but doesn't consistently post on it. She has social accounts, but rarely posts. She's frustrated because she spent all this time creating an amazing seminar or a fantastic book that she's sure that everyone would benefit from. She spent hours and months, maybe even a year or so, on this process. Yet when it comes time to tell people about it, she sends out one email and crickets. The crickets give her validation that few want to hear what she has to say. The crickets give her validation that she's a small business, a small fish who could never compare to the giants in her industry. These giants who make it look so easy. Giants who seemingly have it all. Giants who, if you'd really listen, they have struggles too. They have things that they worry about. They have doubts in themselves. But what they do have is that they consistently stick their neck out and have developed a platform. They, without fail, produce a new piece of content, announce the content on social media and through email. They stay connected with their followers. Over time, with the consistency and getting better at their content, getting better at their communication with their followers, they've learned more about themselves about their audience, and how they may serve and communicate in a much better fashion. It's communication. Communication in a way that allows people to get to know you better. Communication that expresses who you are and what you stand for. Communication that once you have something to offer to help others, the people who are ready will take you up on your offer. But it all starts with building a platform. It's consistency. And through consistency and processes of having a website, having an email process, a social process, and learning what to say, that's your foundation. That's your platform. Like I said, when I decided not to look for another medical job and to start my own business, I jumped in with both feet. I was determined to make it work. And so I read. I read book after book about marketing strategy and what was the most effective way to market in the digital world. And everything pointed me to write. And I ignored it. I ignored it too long. Probably I was in my second or third year of business building. I didn't believe what I was reading and I dismissed it. Writing was hard, but there had to be an easier way. Well, there was. 
through experience, through creating the systems, and then allowing my team, asking for help and having my team help me with those systems so that I could focus on my message and focus on being even more consistent truly helped me. Through my experience, I know that I really shouldn't have hesitated back then when creating my platform. It should be a no-brainer. It's simply the way you do business now, creating a platform, creating that marketing foundation. I'm currently enrolled in a course that will help me take my business to the next level, and I am super happy that I have my foundation. I'm excited to learn more and make it a stronger foundation. I'm even more excited to continue to help those who aren't ready to delegate yet, but instead I may serve them as a guide to help them learn more about creating their own platform, creating their own marketing foundation, finding their voice so that they may grow their business. I want to be that guide to help you Learn to not be afraid to stick your neck out, to produce consistent content, to not be afraid of the tech, and to create a tribe that will result in not having to feel like you're hustling to sell a seminar or a book, but rather you are attracting the clients you need to scale your business. I am truly excited about all the possibilities that I see in you, but the problem is that you may not see the possibilities in yourself. More important than ever, if you are providing any type of service, if you're a coach, a consultant, or an, want to be an online educator, you must create an online platform. You must create your foundation. If you're looking at the future to someday have your own business, but tied to the nine to five job or raising kids, or simply it's not the right time right now, but you have that someday in your sights, I encourage you to start your platform now. I wish I did. Instead, I felt like I was behind when I left my corporate job. Honestly, I wish I had truly listened to what I read in those books long ago. Honestly, I truly wished I listened to those books I read early on in my thinking stages of creating Scrivener Solutions. I didn't start my platform on the side before I even left my 9 to 5 routine. Nope. I just jumped in and started to hustle. Then I learned how important it is to build my marketing foundation. And it is so much easier and it feels so much better to not feel like I'm hustling and I'm cornering somebody. It's not a quick fix. It's a long-term commitment. So ask yourself, do you want to be in business by growing and to scale because people are coming to you instead of you're having to chase them? Or are you just dabbling and content to struggle and continually hustle? You know, the choice is yours. And it's okay not to delegate at first. It may be best that at first you do all your marketing to really get to know and to understand your perfect client. But what's important is that if you truly are ready to grow your business and get out of hustle mode, you won't let excuses stop you from marketing. You won't let excuses stop you from sticking your neck out online to develop relationships through content marketing. You won't let excuses of not knowing where to start or understanding tech or saying that you're too busy stop you. This is what I hate. This is what has been bothering me. I hate to see people feel helpless and to struggle in growing their business. I hate to see people having dreams of growing their business to new heights but are lost as to what to do to build it. The foundation is simple, really. It consists of website, email, social media, and consistent content to create and build your relationships. If you don't know where to start or are unsure what to do in starting your online platform or how these pieces fit together, please stick with me. 
Over the next several weeks, I am going to lay out the steps, recommend resources, and encourage you to create your online platform. Create your foundation for longevity in your business. I am excited to have you on this journey with me. Part of accomplishing more is thinking big. You may be a small business owner, but you think big. Let's start by building your online platform. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. And I am so happy that you are with me and I'm excited for the coming weeks. If you have any questions, I would love for you to drop me a note at podcast at ScrivenerSolutions.com. And you can always subscribe by going to iTunes. Until next time, have a fantastic week.